A brown dwarf is a type of substellar object occupying the mass range between the heaviest gas giant planets and the lightest stars, having a mass between approximately 13 to 75 to 80 times that of Jupiter (MJ) or approximately 2.5 times 1,028 kilograms to about 1.5 times 1029 kilogram. Below this range are the sub-brown dwarfs sometimes referred to as rogue planets, and above it are the lightest red dwarfs M9V. Brown dwarfs may be fully convective, with no layers or chemical differentiation by depth. Unlike the stars in the main sequence, brown dwarfs are not massive enough to sustain nuclear fusion of ordinary hydrogen to helium in their cores. They are, however, thought to fuse deuterium 2H and to fuse lithium 7 Li if their mass is above a debated threshold of 13 MJ and 65 MJ, respectively. It is also debated whether brown dwarfs would be better defined by their formation processes rather than by their supposed nuclear fusion reactions. Stars are categorized by spectral class, with brown dwarfs designated as types M, L, T, and Y. Despite their name, brown dwarfs are of different colors. Many brown dwarfs would likely appear magenta to the human eye, or possibly orange, red. Brown dwarfs are not very luminous at visible wavelengths. There are planets known to orbit brown dwarfs, 2M1207b, MOA2007b LG192 pound, and 2MASSJ044144b. 044144 b at a distance of about 6.5 light years, the nearest known brown dwarf is Lumen 16, a binary system of brown dwarfs discovered in 2013. HR 2562b is listed as the most massive known exoplanet as of December 2017 in NASA's Exoplanet Archive, despite having a mass 30 plus or minus 15 megajoules, more than twice the 13 Jupiter mass cutoff between planets and brown dwarfs. Topic History Topic <laughs> Early Theorizing The objects now called brown dwarfs were theorized to exist in the 1960s by Shiv S. Kumar and were originally called black dwarfs, a classification for dark substellar objects floating freely in space that were not massive enough to sustain hydrogen fusion. However, a the term black dwarf was already in use to refer to a cold white dwarf, b red dwarfs fuse hydrogen, and c these objects may be luminous at visible wavelengths early in their lives. Because of this, alternative names for these objects were proposed, including planetaire and substar. In 1975, Jill Tata suggested the term brown dwarf using brown as an approximate color the term black dwarf still refers to a white dwarf that has cooled to the point that it no longer emits significant amounts of light however the time required for even the lowest mass white dwarf to cool to this temperature is calculated to be longer than the current age of the universe hence such objects are expected to not yet exist Early theories concerning the nature of the lowest mass stars and the hydrogen burning limit suggested that a population I object with a mass less than 0.07 solar masses M or a population II object less than 0.09 M would never go through normal stellar evolution and would become a completely degenerate star. The first self-consistent calculation of the hydrogen burning minimum mass confirmed a value between 0.08 and 0.07 solar masses for population I objects. Topic: 
Topic: <laughs> Deuterium fusion. The discovery of deuterium burning down to 0.012 solar masses and the impact of dust formation in the cool outer atmospheres of brown dwarfs in the late 1980s brought these theories into question. However, such objects were hard to find because they emit almost no visible light. Their strongest emissions are in the infrared IR spectrum, and ground-based IR detectors were too imprecise at that time to readily identify any brown dwarfs. Since then, numerous searches by various methods have sought these objects. These methods included multicolor imaging surveys around field stars, imaging surveys for faint companions of main sequence dwarfs and white dwarfs, surveys of young star clusters, and radial velocity monitoring for close companions. Topic: <laughs> GD165B and class L. For many years, efforts to discover brown dwarfs were fruitless. In 1988, however, a faint companion to a star known as GD165 was found in an infrared search of white dwarfs. The spectrum of the companion GD165b was very red and enigmatic, showing none of the features expected of a low-mass red dwarf. It became clear that GD165b would need to be classified as a much cooler object than the latest M dwarfs then known. GD165b remained unique for almost a decade until the advent of the 2 micron all sky survey, 2 MASS, which discovered many objects with similar colors and spectral features. Today, GD-165b is recognized as the prototype of a class of objects now called L-dwarfs. Although the discovery of the coolest dwarf was highly significant at the time, it was debated whether GD-165b would be classified as a brown dwarf or simply a very low-mass star, because observationally it is very difficult to distinguish between the two. Soon after the discovery of GD-165b, other brown dwarf candidates were reported. Most failed to live up to their candidacy, however, because the absence of lithium showed them to be stellar objects. True stars burn their lithium within a little over 100 mere, whereas brown dwarfs which can, confusingly, have temperatures and luminosities similar to true stars will not. Hence, the detection of lithium in the atmosphere of an object older than 100 mir ensures that it is a brown dwarf. Topic: <laughs> Gliese 229b and class T, the methane dwarfs. In 1995, the study of brown dwarfs changed substantially with the discovery of two indisputable substellar objects, Tady 1 and Gliese 229b, which were identified by the presence of the 670.8 nm lithium line. The latter was found to have a temperature and luminosity well below the stellar range. Its near-infrared spectrum clearly exhibited a methane absorption band at 2 micrometers, a feature that had previously only been observed in the atmospheres of giant planets and that of Saturn's moon Titan. Methane absorption is not expected at any temperature of a main-sequence star. This discovery helped to establish yet another spectral class even cooler than L dwarfs, known as T dwarfs, for which Gliese 229b is the prototype. Topic: <tady> 1 the first class M. In 
Brown Dwarf The first confirmed brown dwarf was discovered by Spanish astrophysicists Rafael Ribolo, head of team, Maria Rosa Zapatero Osorio, and Eduardo Martín in 1994. This object, found in the Pleiades open cluster, received the name Tady 1. The discovery article was submitted to Nature in May 1995, and published on 14 September 1995. Nature highlighted, "...brown dwarfs discovered, official," in the front page of that issue. Tady 1 was discovered in images collected by the IAC team on 6 January 1994 using the 80cm telescope at Tady Observatory and its spectrum was first recorded in December 1994 using the 4.2m William Herschel telescope at Roque de los Muchachos Observatory La Palma. The distance, chemical composition, and age of Tady 1 could be established because of its membership in the Young Pleiades star cluster. Using the most advanced stellar and substellar evolution models at that moment, the team estimated for Tady 1 a mass of 55 plus or minus 15 megajoules, which is below the stellar mass limit. The object became a reference in subsequent young brown dwarf-related works. In theory, a brown dwarf below 65 MJ is unable to burn lithium by thermonuclear fusion at any time during its evolution. This fact is one of the lithium test principles used to judge the substellar nature of low luminosity and low surface temperature astronomical bodies. High-quality spectral data acquired by the Keck-1 telescope in November 1995 showed that Tady-1 still had the initial lithium abundance of the original molecular cloud from which Pleiades stars formed, proving the lack of thermonuclear fusion in its core. These observations confirmed that Tady-1 is a brown dwarf, as well as the efficiency of the spectroscopic lithium test. For some time, Tady-1 was the smallest known object outside the solar system that had been identified by direct observation. Since then, over 1,800 brown dwarfs have been identified, even some very close to Earth like Epsilon Indy Bar and B-flat, a pair of brown dwarfs gravitationally bound to a Sun-like star 12 light-years from the Sun, and Lumen 16, a binary system of brown dwarfs at 6.5 light-years from the Sun. Topic Theory The standard mechanism for star birth is through the gravitational collapse of a cold interstellar cloud of gas and dust. As the cloud contracts it heats due to the Kelvin-Helmholtz mechanism. Early in the process the contracting gas quickly radiates away much of the energy, allowing the collapse to continue. Eventually, the central region becomes sufficiently dense to trap radiation. Consequently, the central temperature and density of the collapsed cloud increases dramatically with time, slowing the contraction, until the conditions are hot and dense enough for thermonuclear reactions to occur in the core of the protostar. For most stars, gas and radiation pressure generated by the thermonuclear fusion reactions within the core of the star will support it against any further gravitational contraction. Hydrostatic equilibrium is reached and the star will spend most of its lifetime fusing hydrogen into helium as a main sequence star. If, however, the mass of the protostar is less than about 0.08 m, normal hydrogen thermonuclear fusion reactions will not ignite in the core. 
Gravitational contraction does not heat the small protostar very effectively, and before the temperature in the core can increase enough to trigger fusion, the density reaches the point where electrons become closely packed enough to create quantum electron degeneracy pressure. According to the brown dwarf interior models, typical conditions in the core for density, temperature and pressure are expected to be the following. 10 g c m 3 rho c 10 3 g c m 3 Display style ten mathram gram per centimeter carrot three lessum row underscore c lessum ten carrot three mathram g c m carrot three t c three times ten six k Display style t underscore c lessum three times ten carat six mathram k p c ten five m b a r Display style p underscore c sim ten carat five mathram m bar this means that the protostar is not massive enough and not dense enough to ever reach the conditions needed to sustain hydrogen fusion. The infalling matter is prevented, by electron degeneracy pressure, from reaching the densities and pressures needed. Further gravitational contraction is prevented and the result is a failed star or brown dwarf that simply cools off by radiating away its internal thermal energy. <laughs> High-mass brown dwarfs versus low-mass stars Lithium is generally present in brown dwarfs and not in low-mass stars. Stars, which reach the high temperature necessary for fusing hydrogen, rapidly deplete their lithium. Fusion of lithium-7 and a proton occurs producing two helium-4 nuclei. The temperature necessary for this reaction is just below that necessary for hydrogen fusion. Convection in low-mass stars ensures that lithium in the whole volume of the star is eventually depleted. Therefore, the presence of the lithium spectral line in a candidate brown dwarf is a strong indicator that it is indeed a substellar object. The lithium test The use of lithium to distinguish candidate brown dwarfs from low-mass stars is commonly referred to as the lithium test, and was pioneered by Rafael Ribolo, Eduardo Martín and Antonio Magazú. However, lithium is also seen in very young stars, which have not yet had enough time to burn it all. Heavier stars, like the Sun, can also retain lithium in their outer layers, which never get hot enough to fuse lithium, and whose convective layer does not mix with the core where the lithium would be rapidly depleted. Those larger stars are easily distinguishable from brown dwarfs by their size and luminosity. Conversely, brown dwarfs at the high end of their mass range can be hot enough to deplete their lithium when they are young. Dwarfs of mass greater than 65 MJ can burn their lithium by the time they are half a billion years old, thus the lithium test is not perfect. <laughs> Atmospheric methane. 
Unlike stars, older brown dwarfs are sometimes cool enough that, over very long periods of time, their atmospheres can gather observable quantities of methane which cannot form in hotter objects. Dwarfs confirmed in this fashion include Gliese 229b. Topic: <inaudible> Iron Rain. Main sequence stars cool, but eventually reach a minimum bolometric luminosity that they can sustain through steady fusion. This varies from star to star, but is generally at least 0.01% that of the Sun. Brown dwarfs cool and darken steadily over their lifetimes, sufficiently old brown dwarfs will be too faint to be detectable. Iron rain as part of atmospheric convection processes is possible only in brown dwarfs, and not in small stars. The spectroscopy research into iron rain is still ongoing, but not all brown dwarfs will always have this atmospheric anomaly. In 2013, a heterogeneous iron-containing atmosphere was imaged around the B component in the close Lumen 16 system. Topic. Low mass brown dwarfs versus high mass planets Like stars, brown dwarfs form independently, but, unlike stars, lack sufficient mass to ignite. Like all stars, they can occur singly or in close proximity to other stars. Some orbit stars and can, like planets, have eccentric orbits. Topic. Size and fuel burning ambiguities Brown dwarfs are all roughly the same radius as Jupiter. At the high end of their mass range 60 to 90 megajoules, the volume of a brown dwarf is governed primarily by electron degeneracy pressure, as it is in white dwarfs. At the low end of the range 10 megajoules, their volume is governed primarily by Coulomb pressure, as it is in planets. The net result is that the radii of brown dwarfs vary by only 10 to 15% over the range of possible masses. This can make distinguishing them from planets difficult. In addition, many brown dwarfs undergo no fusion, those at the low end of the mass range under 13 megajoules are never hot enough to fuse even deuterium, and even those at the high end of the mass range over 60 megajoules cool quickly enough that after 10 million years they no longer undergo fusion. Heat spectrum X-ray and infrared spectra are telltale signs of brown dwarfs. Some emit X-rays, and all warm dwarfs continue to glow tellingly in the red and infrared spectra until they cool to planet-like temperatures under 1000 K. Gas giants have some of the characteristics of brown dwarfs. Like the Sun, Jupiter and Saturn are both made primarily of hydrogen and helium. Saturn is nearly as large as Jupiter, despite having only 30% the mass. Three of the giant planets in the solar system Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune emit much more up to about twice heat than they receive from the Sun. And all four giant planets have their own planetary systems, their moons. Topic. Current IAU standard 
Currently, the International Astronomical Union considers an object above 13 MJ the limiting mass for thermonuclear fusion of deuterium to be a brown dwarf, whereas an object under that mass and orbiting a star or stellar remnant is considered a planet. The 13 Jupiter mass cutoff is a rule of thumb rather than something of precise physical significance. Larger objects will burn most of their deuterium and smaller ones will burn only a little, and the 13 Jupiter mass value is somewhere in between. The amount of deuterium burnt also depends to some extent on the composition of the object, specifically on the amount of helium and deuterium present and on the fraction of heavier elements, which determines the atmospheric opacity and thus the radiative cooling rate. The Extrasolar Planets Encyclopedia includes objects up to 25 Jupiter masses, and the Exoplanet Data Explorer up to 24 Jupiter masses. topic sub brown dwarf objects below 13 megajoules called sub brown dwarf or planetary mass brown dwarf form in the same manner as stars and brown dwarfs ie through the collapse of a gas cloud but have a mass below the limiting mass for thermonuclear fusion of deuterium some researchers call them free floating planets whereas others call them planetary mass brown dwarfs topic <laughs> observations Topic: Classification of brown dwarfs. Topic: Spectral class M. These are brown dwarfs with a spectral class of M6.5 or later. They are also called late M dwarfs. topic spectral class L The defining characteristic of spectral class M, the coolest type in the long-standing classical stellar sequence, is an optical spectrum dominated by absorption bands of titanium oxide TO and vanadium oxide VO molecules. However, GD 165b, the cool companion to the white dwarf GD 165, had none of the hallmark TO features of M dwarfs. The subsequent identification of many objects like GD 165b ultimately led to the definition of a new spectral class, the L dwarfs, defined in the red optical region of the spectrum not by metal oxide absorption bands but by metal hydride emission bands and prominent atomic lines of alkali metals RBI. As of 2013, over 900 L dwarfs have been identified, most by wide field surveys. The 2 micron All Sky Survey, the Deep Near Infrared Survey of the Southern Sky, and the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. This spectral class contains not only the brown dwarfs, because the coolest main sequence stars above brown dwarfs greater than 80 megajoules have the spectral class L2 or L3. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Spectral class T. As GD 165b is the prototype of the L dwarfs, Gliese 229b is the prototype of a second new spectral class, the T dwarfs. 
whereas near-infrared near spectra of L dwarfs show strong absorption bands of H2O and carbon monoxide CO. .The near spectrum of Gliese 229b is dominated by absorption bands from methane CH4, features that were only found in the giant planets of the Solar System and Titan. CH4, H2O, and molecular hydrogen H2 collision induced absorption CIA give Gliese 229b blue near infrared colors. Its steeply sloped red optical spectrum also lacks the FAIR and CRH bands that characterize L dwarfs and instead is influenced by exceptionally broad absorption features from the alkali metals Na and K. These differences led Kirkpatrick to propose the T spectral class for objects exhibiting H and K band CH4 absorption. As of 2013, 355 T dwarfs are known. Near classification schemes for T dwarfs have recently been developed by Adam Bergasser and Tom Gebel. Theory suggests that L dwarfs are a mixture of very low mass stars and sub stellar objects, brown dwarfs, whereas the T dwarf class is composed entirely of brown dwarfs. Because of the absorption of sodium and potassium in the green part of the spectrum of T dwarfs, the actual appearance of T dwarfs to human visual perception is estimated to be not brown, but the color of magenta. T class brown dwarfs, such as WISE 0316 plus 4307, have been detected over 100 light years from the Sun. Topic. Spectral class Y There is some doubt as to what, if anything, should be included in the class Y dwarfs. They are expected to be much cooler than T dwarfs. They have been modeled, though there is no well-defined spectral sequence yet with prototypes. In 2009, the coolest known brown dwarfs had estimated effective temperatures between 500 and 600 K, and have been assigned the spectral class T9. Three examples are the brown dwarfs CFBDS J005910, 90, 011401.3, ULAS J1335534.45 plus 113005.2, and ULAS J003402.77 minus 005206.7. The spectra of these objects have absorption peaks around 1.55 micrometers. Delorme et al. have suggested that this feature is due to absorption from ammonia and that this should be taken as indicating the Ty transition, making these objects of type Y0. However, the feature is difficult to distinguish from absorption by water and methane, and other authors have stated that the assignment of class Y0 is premature. In April 2010, two newly discovered ultracool sub brown dwarfs, UGPS 0722 05 and SDWFS 1433 were proposed as prototypes for spectral class Y0. In February 2011, Lumen et al. reported the discovery of a brown dwarf companion to a nearby white dwarf with a temperature of c. 300 K and mass of 7 MJ. Though of planetary mass, Rodriguez et al. suggest it is unlikely to have formed in the same manner as planets. Shortly after that, Lu et al. published an account of a very cold c. 370 K brown dwarf orbiting another very low mass brown dwarf and noted that, given its low luminosity, atypical colors and cold temperature, CFBDS J1458 plus 10 B is a promising candidate for the hypothesized Y spectral class. 
In August 2011, scientists using data from NASA's Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer WISE discovered six white dwarfs, star-like bodies with temperatures as cool as the human body. WISE data has revealed hundreds of new brown dwarfs. Of these, 14 are classified as cool ice. One of the Y dwarfs, called Ys 1828 plus 2650, was, as of August 2011, the record holder for the coldest brown dwarf, emitting no visible light at all. This type of object resembles free floating planets more than stars. Wise 1828 plus 2650 was initially estimated to have an atmospheric temperature cooler than 300 K. For comparison, the upper end of room temperature is 298 K, 25 degrees Celsius, 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Its temperature has since been revised and newer estimates put it in the range of 250 to 400 K minus 23 to 127 degrees Celsius minus 10 to 260 degrees Fahrenheit in April 2014 wise 0855-0714 was announced with a temperature profile estimated around 225 to 260 K Minus 48 to minus 13 degrees Celsius, minus 55 to 8 degrees Fahrenheit, and a mass of 3 to 10 megajoules. It was also unusual in that its observed parallax meant a distance close to 7.2 plus or minus 0.7 light years from the solar system. Topic. Spectral and atmospheric properties of brown dwarfs The majority of flux emitted by L and T dwarfs is in the 1 to 2.5 micrometers near infrared range. Low and decreasing temperatures through the late M, L, and T dwarf sequence result in a rich near-infrared spectrum containing a wide variety of features, from relatively narrow lines of neutral atomic species to broad molecular bands, all of which have different dependencies on temperature, gravity, and metallicity. Furthermore, these low temperature conditions favor condensation out of the gas state and the formation of grains. Typical atmospheres of known brown dwarfs range in temperature from 2200 down to 750 K compared to stars, which warm themselves with steady internal fusion. Brown dwarfs cool quickly over time, more massive dwarfs cool more slowly than less massive ones. Topic. Observational techniques Coronagraphs have recently been used to detect faint objects orbiting bright visible stars, including Gliese 229b. Sensitive telescopes equipped with charge-coupled devices CCDs have been used to search distant star clusters for faint objects, including TADY-1. Wide field searches have identified individual faint objects, such as Kelu-1 30 light years away. Brown dwarfs are often discovered in surveys to discover extrasolar planets. Methods of detecting extrasolar planets work for brown dwarfs as well, although brown dwarfs are much easier to detect. Brown dwarfs can be powerful emitters of radio emission due to their strong magnetic fields. Observing programs at the Arecibo Observatory and the Very Large Array have detected over a dozen such objects, which are also called ultracool dwarfs because they share common magnetic properties with other objects in this class. The detection of radio emission from brown dwarfs permits their magnetic field strengths to be measured directly. Topic: 
Milestones 1995 – First brown dwarf verified. TD1, an M8 object in the Pleiades cluster, is picked out with a CCD in the Spanish observatory of Roque de los Muchachos of the Instituto de Astrofichitza de Canarias, first methane brown dwarf verified. Gliese 229b is discovered orbiting red dwarf Gliese 229a 20 light years away using an adaptive optics coronagraph to sharpen images from the 60-inch reflecting telescope at Palomar Observatory on Southern California's Mount Palomar. Follow-up infrared spectroscopy made with their 200-inch Hale telescope shows an abundance of methane. 1998 – First X-ray emitting brown dwarf found. Char Halfa 1, an M8 object in the chameleon eye dark cloud, is determined to be an X-ray source, similar to convective late-type stars. 15 December 1999 – First X-ray flare detected from a brown dwarf. A team at the University of California monitoring LP944-20 60 megajoules, 16 light years away via the Chandra X-ray Observatory, catches a two-hour flare. The 27th of July 2000, first radio emission in flare and quiescence detected from a brown dwarf. A team of students at the Very Large Array detected emission from LP944-20. The 25th of April 2014, coldest known brown dwarf discovered. WISE 0855-0714 is 7.2 light years away, seventh closest system to the sun and has a temperature between -48 to -13 degrees Celsius. Topic: <laughs> Brown dwarf as an X-ray source. X-ray flares detected from brown dwarfs since 1999 suggest changing magnetic fields within them, similar to those in very low-mass stars. With no strong central nuclear energy source, the interior of a brown dwarf is in a rapid boiling, or convective state. When combined with the rapid rotation that most brown dwarfs exhibit, convection sets up conditions for the development of a strong, tangled magnetic field near the surface. The flare observed by Chandra from LP944-20 could have its origin in the turbulent magnetized hot material beneath the brown dwarf's surface. A sub-surface flare could conduct heat to the atmosphere, allowing electric currents to flow and produce an X-ray flare, like a stroke of lightning. The absence of X-rays from LP944-20 during the non-flaring period is also a significant result. It sets the lowest observational limit on steady X-ray power produced by a brown dwarf, and shows that coronas cease to exist as the surface temperature of a brown dwarf cools below about 2800K and becomes electrically neutral. Using NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory, scientists have detected X-rays from a low-mass brown dwarf in a multiple star system. This is the first time that a brown dwarf this close to its parent stars sun-like stars TWA5A has been resolved in X-rays. Our Chandra data show that the X-rays originate from the brown dwarf's coronal plasma which is some 3 million degrees Celsius, said Yoko Suboy of Chuo University in Tokyo. This brown dwarf is as bright as the sun today in X-ray light, while it is 50 times less massive than the sun," said Suboy. This observation, thus, raises the possibility that even massive planets might emit X-rays by themselves during their youth.
Topic: <laughs> Brown dwarfs as radio sources. Brown dwarfs can maintain magnetic fields of up to 6 kg in strength. Approximately 5 to 10% of brown dwarfs appear to have strong magnetic fields and emit radio waves, and there may be as many as 40 magnetic brown dwarfs within 25% of the sun based on Monte Carlo modeling and their average spatial density. The regular, periodic reversal of radio wave orientation may indicate that brown dwarf magnetic fields periodically reverse orientation. These reversals may be the result of a brown dwarf magnetic activity cycle, similar to the solar cycle. <laughs> Recent developments. The brown dwarf char 1109137734444, located 500 light years away in the constellation Chameleon, may be in the process of forming a miniature planetary system. Astronomers from Pennsylvania State University have detected what they believe to be a disk of gas and dust similar to the one hypothesized to have formed the solar system. Char 1109137734444 is the smallest brown dwarf found to date, 8 megajoules, and if it formed a planetary system, it would be the smallest known object to have one. Recent observations of known brown dwarf candidates have revealed a pattern of brightening and dimming of infrared emissions that suggests relatively cool, opaque cloud patterns obscuring a hot interior that is stirred by extreme winds. The weather on such bodies is thought to be extremely violent, comparable to but far exceeding Jupiter's famous storms. On January 8, 2013 astronomers using NASA's Hubble and Spitzer Space Telescopes probed the stormy atmosphere of a brown dwarf named 2MASSJ2228288943102626, creating the most detailed «weather map» of a brown dwarf thus far. It shows wind-driven, planet-sized clouds. The new research is a stepping stone toward a better understanding not only brown dwarfs, but also of the atmospheres of planets beyond the Solar System. NASA's WISE mission has detected 200 new brown dwarfs. There are actually fewer brown dwarfs in our cosmic neighborhood than previously thought. Rather than one star for every brown dwarf, there may be as many as six stars for every brown dwarf. In a study published in August 2017, NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope monitored infrared brightness variations in brown dwarfs caused by cloud cover of variable thickness. The observations revealed that large-scale waves propagating in the atmospheres of brown dwarfs similarly to the atmosphere of Neptune and other solar system giant planets. These atmospheric waves modulate the thickness of the clouds and propagate with different velocities probably due to differential rotation. Planets around brown dwarfs The Super Jupiter planetary mass objects 2M1207b and 2MASSJ044144 that are orbiting brown dwarfs at large orbital distances may have formed by cloud collapse rather than accretion and so may be sub brown dwarfs rather than planets, which is inferred from relatively large masses and large orbits. The first discovery of a low-mass companion orbiting a brown dwarf Char Alpha 8 at a small orbital distance using the radial velocity technique paved the way for the detection of planets around brown dwarfs on orbits of a few O or smaller. However, with a mass ratio between the companion and primary in Char Alpha 8 of about 0.3, this system rather resembles a binary star. 
Then, in 2013, the first planetary mass companion OGLE2012 BLG0358 LB in a relatively small orbit was discovered orbiting a brown dwarf. In 2015, the first terrestrial mass planet orbiting a brown dwarf was found, OGLE 2013 BLG 0723 LBB. Disks around brown dwarfs have been found to have many of the same features as disks around stars, therefore, it is expected that there will be accretion formed planets around brown dwarfs. Given the small mass of brown dwarf disks, most planets will be terrestrial planets rather than gas giants. If a giant planet orbits a brown dwarf across our line of sight, then, because they have approximately the same diameter, this would give a large signal for detection by transit. The accretion zone for planets around a brown dwarf is very close to the brown dwarf itself, so tidal forces would have a strong effect. Planets around brown dwarfs are likely to be carbon planets depleted of water. A 2016 study, based upon observations with Spitzer estimates that 175 brown dwarfs need to be monitored in order to guarantee 95% at least one detection of a planet. Topic: Habitability. Habitability for hypothetical planets orbiting brown dwarfs has been studied. Computer models suggesting conditions for these bodies to have habitable planets are very stringent, the habitable zone being narrow and decreasing with time due to the cooling of the brown dwarf. The orbits there would have to be of extremely low eccentricity of the order of 10-6 to avoid strong tidal forces that would trigger a greenhouse effect on the planets, rendering them uninhabitable. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Superlative brown dwarfs. WD 0137-349b, first confirmed brown dwarf to have survived the primary's red giant phase. In 1984, it was postulated by some astronomers that the Sun may be orbited by an undetected brown dwarf sometimes referred to as Nemesis that could interact with the Oort cloud just as passing stars can. However, this hypothesis has fallen out of favor. Topic: See also Brown dwarf desert theorized range of orbits around a star on which brown dwarfs cannot exist as a companion object. Blue dwarf red dwarf stage hypothetical class of star that develops from a red dwarf dark matter hypothetical form of matter comprising most of the matter in the universe exoplanet any planet beyond the solar system